In this video I'm going to do an example of an application of the central limit theorem and the central limit theorem that applies to a sum. And I'm going to use the very familiar setting of waiting in line at the license branch. So let's suppose that there are 50 people in line at the license branch at closing time. Okay, I'm saying closing time because I don't want to think about more people coming in. We have these 50 people and we need to serve them and then we're done. Uh, the time it takes to serve a person, well that's a random quantity. Okay, and it's going to have a mean of 5 minutes and a standard deviation of 3 minutes. Notice I didn't tell you what the distribution is. And none of the distributions that we have talked about in this class just jump out at you and say, oh, definitely that should be the serving time for one person at the license branch. But the, again, the power of the central limit theorem is it doesn't matter what the distribution is, so long as n is large. And we're going to assume that 50 is large. And that's an assumption, and it could be that there, for our distribution, n isn't large enough. But in general, it's... Um, it's fairly safe to assume that n is large enough so long as it's at least 30. Okay, five people can be served at a time. What is the probability that all 50 people can be served within an hour? Okay, and we're going to approximate this. We're going to do a little bit of fudging in our calculation, but it turns out in mathematics, whenever you want to apply it to life, you always have to fudge a little bit, <laughs> okay? The mathematical model will never line up with real life exactly. Real life is just too complicated. And with the mathematics, we try to extract the important information, the important qualities of the system, and leave the qualities of the system that don't have much of an effect. They do have a little effect, but not much of an effect um, out of our model. Okay, so I'm going to have random variables here. And each random variable is going to give you an amount of time that it takes for someone to be helped. So, let's see, I need my pen tool x sub i is going to be how many minutes, so it's the number of minutes needed to serve uh, the ith person. So we have 50 people, so this applies for i equals 1 up to 50. Then, if we add together all of those random variables, then that's how many minutes of service the license branch still needs to give. Okay, we got 50 people, and each of these random variables is how many minutes they need to, they need to be served, how many minutes they need of the personnel at the license branch. So this is the total minutes needed. And that distribution is going to be, let me actually undo that equal sign because I want to do a approximate. That distribution is going to be approximately normal because it makes sense to assume that these random variables are first of all identical. There's no reason to think that the fifth person is going to be more likely to take um, six minutes or less likely to take six minutes than the first person, they're going to be identically distributed and independent. It, it makes sense to assume that everybody's needs are independent of everybody else's needs, and there's just one common distribution that applies. And wh however long the fifth person takes, uh, the sixth person isn't affected by that. This is going to be normally distributed with a mean equal to 50 times the mean of the individual. So 50 times 5, that's 250. And a standard deviation of the square root of n, so the square root of 50, 
times the standard deviation of the individual. And I do want to emphasize it again. We're making some assumptions. We're making the assumption that the, these random variables are independent and identically distributed. And you might be able to come up with reasons that really those assumptions might not hold. And that's an important consideration. And any time we do a statistical argument, okay, the central limit theorem is going to play a big role in our next part of the course when we talk about statistics. Any part, anytime we do a statistical argument, we have to make assumptions like this. And unfortunately, a lot of times, um, we can't be 100% sure that those assumptions hold, but we have to start somewhere. We have to do something so we go off of those assumptions. Okay, the square root of 50 times 3, that is about 21.2, just for your information. Um, and what are we asked to find here? We're looking for the probability that everybody can be served within an hour. Okay, well this is the total number of minutes needed by the personnel. And it's probably going to be larger than 50 because the mean is 250 and the standard deviation is 21. So the, the probability that's less than an hour is, or less than 60 minutes is extremely low. We're not asking for that though. We're asking for the probability that the sum, okay, that's how many hours of service is needed but five people can be served at a time. So to have everybody served within an hour means that they would need less than or equal to 60 minutes times five people at a time. So we have 60 minutes times the five, that's the 300 minutes. Okay, And this is another place where a little bit of fudging is going on. And that fudging is at the very end. You know, when there's just two people left at the license branch, what we're going to assume is that these five people can be served at the time. The, the personnel that are left over, they can help to make things faster. And usually that's not the case, um, but, but we have to assume something. And this is going to be a good approximation here. Okay, so here's all the minutes of service that are going to be needed. Here's how many minutes of service we have available. Okay, here's how many minutes of service we have available um, for an hour of five people being served at a time. Okay, well we have a distribution for this sum and we're wanting to find the probability is less than or equal to this value. Since it's a normal distribution, we will use a z-score. So the z-score of 300 for this normal distribution is 300 minus the mean 250 divided by the standard deviation, the square root of 50 times 3. And that z-score, if you plug it in your calculator, comes out to about 2.36. So we're looking for the probability that z is less than or equal to 2.36. Well, if I pull up the normal distribution table here and find 2.36, it's way down here. Okay, it's right there. It's right there. There's the 2.3 column. Notice that it's not at the bottom of that row. It's just one up. And if I go up, there's 0.6. Okay, so the 2.34 over from the right, it's 0 0.9909. So our probability is about 0 0.9909. And I'm going to get rid of that equals question mark here. All right, so that's it. That's our probability. And the new thing here is coming up with this normal distribution. Even if we don't completely know the distribution for those random variables, we need to know the mean and their standard deviation, but we don't need to know the type of the distribution. As long as there's a bunch of them and are ident identically distributed and independent, we can say that the sum of those is approximately normal. And here we see that there's about a 99% probability of being able to serve everyone before, um, before an hour elapses. Now I want to discuss this a little bit more, and um, I made my sheet a little bit bigger so I can scroll down here. What I want to do is talk about the distribution of the time until done. Okay, the time until we're done. So when I sum up all these random variables, that gives me how many minutes of service is needed. And we're able to give five minutes of service for each minute because we can serve five people at a time. So if I add up all those minutes of service needed and divide by five, that's about how many minutes it's going to take until all the customers are served. 
Well, since the sum is approximately normal with mean 250 in the standard deviation, then if we divide by 5, we saw when we were studying the normal distribution that if I um, just multiply by a constant, in this case I'm multiplying by 1 fifth, the random variable, then we're again normal. And that the mean just gets multiplied by the constant, so we divide by 5 for the mean and we get 50. That makes sense. There's a mean of 50 um, minutes that it takes to serve everybody. And then the standard deviation will also get divided by 5. So we'll have the square root of 3 times the square root of 50 divided by 5. Now if I pull a 25 out of that square root, that'll cancel with the 5's, and I just get 3 times the square root of 2. And I want to do this because I want to pull up Wolfram Alpha and show you that it can give us some intuition about this normal distribution. So if I pull up Wolfram Alpha here, and I just tell it that my random variable is n of 50 comma 3 times the square root of 2. Well first of all it it's assuming that that's a math function. Um, I'm not sure what function it assumes at first, but if I click tell it that it's a probability distribution, then there's a couple things to know. It knows that that means normal distribution, but it interprets that second argument differently. You might remember I had a note of that in the text. Sometimes this, some sources will call this a standard deviation as we have. Other sources will call this a variance. We see that actually um, Wolfram Alpha interprets that number after the mean as the variance. So since we this is a standard deviation for our example, we need to square it to, for it to give us the correct distribution here. And then it will have that the um, standard deviation is 3 times the square root of 2. So you can see that right here. Okay, what that does is it gives us some nice um, information. We don't talk about skewness and kurtosis in this class, um, but it does graph. It graphs the distribution for us, and I think that really helps to develop our intuition here. It's going to take about 50 minutes, and most likely it's going to be between 45 and 55 minutes, and um, it's going to be pretty unlikely to get outside of 40 to 60 minute range. So we see that, even though there's 50 customers, and they're actually pretty very in the amount of time it takes to serve them. They have a standard deviation of three minutes. Um, those 50 cu customers together, how long it takes to serve them is fairly predictable. Okay, we can be pretty sure we're not going to be there for longer than an hour. We can also be pretty sure that we're not going to be let out before half an hour. Okay, so that last little discussion um, this time until done, that was that did not help us answer the question. All it did is gave us a little bit more insight into what was going on here. Uh, what's the probability that all 50 people can be served within an hour? That is 99% approximately.